nice. Before the flywheel goes on, this uh, plate thing that the lower flywheel guard bolts to goes on. Okay, so it says to torque these things to 75 85 foot pounds to do that. I'm just going to take a couple of these old flywheel bolts here, our clutch bolts. So I got a new LUK clutch. I got this thing off of Rock Auto. They had the best price on it. It was like $85, $89 for the whole entire clutch kit. So it came with the pressure plate, clutch plate, um, some lubricant for the throw up bearing, or the pilot bearing, sorry. It came with a new throw out bearing and alignment tool and a stack of every bushing that Ford ever offered plus nine more looks like. Um, so I just realized that this crank out of the 390 did not have a pilot bushing in there so we'll have to figure out which one of this from the stack here goes in that hole but then also fits over the transmission input shaft in a second and hammer that guy in. So here's the trans input shaft. Then a stack of bushing choices. So it looks like it's going to be one of the smaller ones in order to go inside of that inner hole in there. Oh, uh, this is not good. This one looks like it'll fit over the input shaft and it'll press in the back part of the uh, this crank. It's got a big, that larger diameter hole cut in it and then a small diameter hole. And then it looks like the uh, none of these bearings will actually go into that smaller diameter hole. So it looks like this guy's our guy. Uh, it'll just fit flush in the back and it will clear. It fits on the in front of the, uh, the input shaft very nicely. So just to cheat here, here's the crank that came out of that 360 that the transmission was stabbed into before. We can see the end of that crank there had that big bushing just push into the, the larger diameter and it had a smaller diameter for the input shaft to sit in there. So we'll go back and put it, the same setup back in that, uh, that 390 crank. Okay, to install this, I'm just going to use just gonna use the ball pin, a uh, big like 15, 16 socket. Try to sp knock this thing in as straight as possible. All right, it feels good and solid there. It's got a nice even gap all the way around. So we're going to call that good. So here's the throttle bearing, which I think is just clipped on this. This fork here. It just uses these two clips on the back, and they just go. They just hook around the back side of that fork. There's what they do. Okay, and this. Graphite grease they give you just goes on the splines. I'm just going to keep the alignment tool in the clutch and set the clutch in place. I'll put the pressure plate on. 
just going to use the original clutch bolts that came out of the original pressure plate. Put this clutch back on here and tighten it down in a kind of just crisscross pattern. I'm just going to make sure that it, that clutch plate is still on line with the pilot bushing in there. And if I can still get the alignment tool in and out freely like this, we know that the input shaft and the transmission will go in just as freely. We say uh, 35 foot pounds. Which I'd guess we're at with the uh, the impact. No. Okay, ready to stab the transmission on now. So here's the trans, fresh out of the rebuild shop. I'm just kidding. I uh, I just took some oven cleaner and a pressure washer to it and clean it up and then I just sprayed it with some of this silver uh, engine paint I had laying around just to clean it up so it wasn't quite so rusty. Put the starter back in here. Yeah, the starter only had two bolts in it when I took it off. And uh, I thought, well, that's kind of weird. But now I'm trying to put this third bolt back in here. You understand why. This thing's a, uh, thing's a nightmare to get to. Okay, so I put the starter on this side. Now it's time for the last header and then try to set this thing back in its, own, in its new home. Engine's in there. It uh, was kind of fighting with those headers going past the uh, motor mount standoffs there. So I actually had to go inside and get my wife to help me. So I was hanging off the back of the transmission underneath it to get the engine some more angle while she lowered the crane and that let it slip down in that hole, let those headers actually go past those risers there. So that was a pretty big fight, but it got in there. Um, now it's sitting there. I threw the, the rear engine cross member in there. And the new motor mount and uh, so go ahead and start hooking this thing back up putting the wiring harness back on I got a box from Summit Racing a few minutes ago so I luckily well hopefully that works out where I can plug this vacuum port and I can put the different elbow in here to get that all hooked up and taken care of and then I got some risers for that air cleaner to get all squared away uh, so I'll just start throwing parts on this thing and get it back together the Summit Racing showed up. Oh, well, my order did. There's two six foot links, uh, 5 8 hose. So I'm hoping to be able to hook the heater back up with that guy. I got my two air cleaner risers to try to get the air cleaner up an inch and three quarter from where it is now. I think I can stack these rings in a configuration to make them an inch and three quarter total. 
And then those fittings that I needed. So these are the ones that are going to plug that vacuum port under the carburetor. There's a hose nipple there to go plug in the top of the water pump for one of those heater hoses. And then there's that L bracket for that intake manifold heater hose. So I'm hoping there's enough height here to go over that fuel line. So we'll open this stuff up and try to get this thing rolling. So we're back to things not working again. The uh, tall riser that came out of here had plenty of clearance to clear this boss on the side of the manifold. But this new riser that I got obviously is significantly shorter. And when I put it in to try to get it to thread in, it hits this boss over here. So there's no way to get it to like actually make five or six turns down in there. So I guess it's back to uh, ordering one of these or see if I can find a shorter one of these. Kind of frustrating though. All right, we're getting close to getting ready to go here. Uh, just a few more things. I kind of put the power strain pump on, put the fan on with the belt and the alternator bracket back on. Uh, got it tightened back up. I put a piece of heater hose in place here just to run as a bypass between the water pump and the manifold. Um, oops, let's just put that fuel line back on. Um, I put a vacuum hose to the PCV valve back there so it hopefully sucks some vapors out of this thing and uh, just a few odds and ends so I gotta put 12 volts up here to the distributor to make sure the distributor gets power uh, I'll put the radiator hose and stuff back in it here but it's getting close I'm gonna go ahead and fill it with oil and some more of this uh, comp cams and your braking oil especially since there's a brand new cam in there and the whole thing's brand new and I'm going to put 5 quarts of 20W50 in this thing. That's what I filled up the, this engine with before. And it seemed to do real well. It seemed to have excellent oil pressure. So I think we're going to just stay with that theme there. Okay, with that done, it's time to prime the oil in pump. So I'm just going to use a, uh, a pump prime tool. It has the hex-sided... Uh, end in the end of the tool here just for a forward like small block I guess forward big block type tool okay so I'm gonna set the camera in here to watch the gauge the key is in the on or run position. And I'm going to go out there and take the drill and try to pressurize the pump. Well, it's bleeding off now. I was going to be very surprised that it uh, held oil pressure even afterwards. So it looks like it has great oil pressure. So we'll call that a win. Stab that distributor in and go. So I'm going to stab this distributor back in here for hopefully the final time. The engine is sitting about 10 or 11 degrees before top dead center. And I'm going to use this mark as uh, my number one post here on the distributor. And I'm going to drop this thing in. So keeping in mind that this is number one, I'm going to have, uh, we put a corresponding mark here to make a line to say this is uh, in line with that number one post on the cap. So I'm gonna move the distributor rotor around to where it's pretty close to being in alignment with that marked. Remember as it drops in, it's gonna kinda chunk, 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 click in as these spirals, these gears go by here. And just for a little bit of insurance, I'll put a little bit of this uh, assembly lube on this gear and a little bit down here on the shaft as well, just to make sure there's no issues. So I want the vacuum advance to kind of point forward. I want the rotor to come around and line up with that pin there. So I set the rotor a few degrees back and drop this guy in. Oop, went the wrong way. I'm going to bring the rotor around this way, just forward of it. 
Looks pretty close there. So again, looking at the distributor, the vacuum canister is pointing forward how we want it. And that'll obviously, there should be some timing changes, so it'll swing back one way or the other. But I'm hoping about 12 degrees here is where this rotor will come around and just barely touch this mark. So worst case, we advance the timing a little bit and it goes back this way. Or if we retard it a little bit, it'll come back this way. Um, but that vacuum canister should stay pointing towards the front grill on the truck there. And so now it's kind of a guessing game is to figure out how well aligned we are. Time to fill this thing with some coolant. So I made a 50-50 mix of distilled water and antifreeze here. I've just got that in a bucket, ready to go. And to fill this thing, I'm going to use this uh, coolant evacuator tool. What this does is pulls a vacuum on the system. And it kind of does two things. One, it checks for leaks, and then two, it makes it uh, not burp out a whole bunch of air bubbles and stuff whenever this thing actually does come up to temperature for the first time. Okay, so new problem. I went to pull a vacuum on the cooling system in order to fill it up, and the cooling system wouldn't hold pressure. So I thought maybe I had a plug loose, maybe I left a, a plug out somewhere, I had a line loose. So I went back and double checked everything, and I decided to pressurize the system. But when I pressurize it, I'm getting some sort of leaking out from underneath the intake manifold. Uh, so all the I pulled the valve cover off and the noise gets a lot more prominent. The air leaking noise gets a lot more prominent. It's coming out from underneath the uh, the push rod guides here. So it's like the air is coming in from underneath the intake manifold and coming out where the, the valve cover is here. So I pulled the spark plugs out thinking maybe there was some sort of a, a crack in the cylinder or something weird. Uh, I know I had the block checked and magnafluxed and it came back clean. The heads were checked and magnafluxed, they came back clean. These are the same heads and the same block that was in the truck before. The only thing that changed was this intake manifold. Uh, so I'm concerned that there's a crack on the bottom side of this intake manifold. Keep in mind it was a junkyard intake manifold. So it could have been full of just plain water. It could have frozen. And then somebody decided to just haul the thing into the junkyard. All I did was kind of scuff it up and shoot it, put some paint on it, and throw it on here. I assumed an intake manifold would be fine. Um, so I think what I'm going to do now is uh, stop this video here and let you guys see what it's doing. So I can pressurize the system and then there's probably less than, less than 10 pounds of pressure in there. And that noise is really prominent underneath it and I can't feel the I can't feel the air coming out anywhere. I thought maybe it was uh, just a bolt that a bolt that should have had sealant put on it, like a bolt that goes into the water jacket. Um, I'm really just not sure. It really sounds like it's coming from underneath the intake. I can put my ear over the, uh, the the carb spacer here, and there's no air coming out here. All the air is coming out from like the oil fill hole on this side, and then the um, underside of the intake manifold on this side. So, maybe I'll post this video, let you guys look at it, see if people have ideas on what that could be. Possibly a misaligned intake manifold gasket. Um, maybe I'll take that manifold to a machine shop and have them pressure test it. I only paid like $35 for the manifold, so I'm tempted to just go buy another one. Instead of paying those guys 30 or 40 bucks to pressure test it. All right, well, we'll call it a day.